תודה, מינה. תודה ל... קודם תודה שבאתם בערב. אני אנסה גם לדבר על דברים שאני חושב מעניינים, גם לשעשע אתכם קצת, כי להכניס קצת הומור, כי זה בכל זאת בערב ומאוחר, וקשה להיות רציני כבר שעשע, אבל יותר טוב לו היה יין, גם אולי זה גם היה עוזר גם... אולי להבין את הסוג החומר הזה, את היין, היה עושה אותו יותר ברור אולי. ואני רוצה להודות למינה ולכל החבר'ה באוניברסיטה שהזמינו אותי, וכבוד גדול, ואני נהנה להיות כאן. עכשיו, אם תרשו לי, אני אעבור לאנגלית, אבל שיש שאלות בעברית אפשר, ופשוט אני עברתי על החומר הזה. בעברית היום בבוקר, אבל ראיתי שרוב המילים אתם לא תדעו בעברית, כן? כי הרבה, יש הרבה ביולוגיה בתוך גם את העניין, ואז... אז טוב, אז מה שיהיה יהיה. אוקיי. זה מאוד לא נורא. אז עם קצת יומר, וזה עוזר. combat stress. So I'm going to talk about uh, 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 some of the new things we're trying to do in which we're looking at the impact of stress not only on <clears throat> the psychological mechanisms but also on biological underpinnings that more and more we're beginning to understand are actually uh, uh, joined together at very deep levels. And that really fits conservation of resources theory because conservation of resources theory is, uh, says that stress comes from evolutionary rules, which means if it's evolutionary and on stress, it's very deep brain. And in fact, right now, we're uh, going to begin to do some uh, research on PTSD doing a, a ganglion block of the spinal cord to stop pain because there's some indication that if you stop pain, you stop pain including emotional pain, and that actually there is a recovery from PTSD uh, with this uh, ganglion block under anesthesia. Don't worry, I'm obviously not the one that's going to do the ganglion block. These are anesthesiologists, and we're doing with the Department of the Navy. But it just speaks to uh, how, how deep might be this relationship between uh, uh, stress, our, our psychology, and our biology. I'm also, because you were willing to come tonight, I'm going to give you the secrets of life. of dealing with stress. And I really do think that these are uh, uh, the secrets. Uh, one possible proof that they are uh, uh, is that, um, you know what they say in the advertisements, uh, uh, you know, try Coca-Cola like, you know, five other, 50 other million people have done. Well, core theory as an invention has been used now twice in China for the SARS epidemic on about 25 or 30 million people, and after the, uh, uh, after the earthquakes, which was an area of about 120 million people affected. So it's, it's been, uh, what, what can I say, it's been used by, by, by now a couple hundred million people. It must be right. Of course, that's not really true, but one way of thinking about it. And, you know, um, we're, we're really, stress makes all these demands on us, And, and they immediately affect our biology. And, you know, I, I, want, I want a candy bar, a, 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 a chocolate, something to, to soothe me. So, um, and this is very hard to, to see how this is set up. Okay. So, obviously, and I think uh, people in this room probably know most of these things, but let's go over them together. Most individuals recover from acute stressors, uh, but stressors have major impact under what conditions? Well, when they're severe. So combat, rape, domestic violence, cancer diagnosis in a young a person, bad birth outcomes, these are all things that we've been looking at. Uh, the stressor is both major and chronic. So when, when the nature of the stressor has chronicity, this is uh, uh, more taxing. And family conflict, major health problems, chronic severe illness, sexism, sexual harassment, bullying, and uh, of course war, terrorism, rocket attacks. And then also, and again, these are things that are, are, are uh, 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 I think, obvious to, to probably everyone in the room. We also know that uh, they're harder on people that have uh, fewer coping resources, low self-esteem, history of psychiatric problems, chronic sleep impairment, uh, 
poor social support. So kind of the general rules of the road. Uh, in, in, in our studies, um, <clears throat> we've actually, our group has done uh, 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 the most studies of the Israeli public and Palestinians. We've, I think, interviewed somewhere about 22,000 Israelis now in these different studies, several thousand Palestinians. We have uh, cross-sectional, we have longitudinal, we, we, we have uh, 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 so much data that we have a book that just guides us through all of the different uh, studies that went on. And also, I should thank the U.S. National Institute of Health that gave us about $3 million to do these studies because they ends up being quite uh, expensive. Now, there's increased evidence linking stress, psychopathology, and immune functioning. And that's something that's begun to interest us uh, a lot. So the impact of stress and PTSD and depression uh, are impacting immune functioning, and it may follow through the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal access and the sympathetic nervous system, areas of the brain that seem to be uh, both stress centers, action centers, and emotion centers. So already you see if, uh, if it's action and emotion, uh, how important it is. Uh, it's just an example on uh, the hypothalamus and how important uh, uh, this is. I had a patient rec recently with chronic and severe and intractable depression. And uh, I thought there might be a tumor there, and they did an MRI, and there's no tumor. And the neurologist that did it checked and says, no, you're wrong. And a week later, he calls me back. He says, oh, my God, half of his hypothalamus is gone. The depression had eaten away almost half of his hypothalamus, uh, which is which the de depression does eat away at the hypothalamus, usually in a much slower process. But this intractable depression was because in his body it happened to be eating it away at, at a much faster pace. Uh, the HPA axis and the central nervous system activation modulate several mediators of the immune response. So we've probably heard about cortisol, epinephrine, norepinephrine, well, again, very important processes, and they're important in, in a couple of different ways. The one way that they're important is these are the fight-flight hormones. Okay, good enough. But what happens is humans are sort of made to be thrown away. What I mean by that, you know, the, the kind of thing, one use uh, and, and don't use again. After especially traumatic events, what happens is there's a reversal of the, uh, of the nature of these mechanisms. So instead of helping the body, it actually starts harming the body. Uh, after, so we're kind of good for one shot. Um, then when stress is severe or chronic, these changes may also have inflammatory consequences related to insulin resistance syndrome, obesity, arteriosclerosis, and type 2 diabetes. Well, I'm not myself a, a, a biologist, I'm not a physician, and you don't have to be either. But what, you, what we see here is that the chronic stress is causing a process which is called inflammation generally. What's inflammation? Well, we've all had a cut, and you see when it's inflamed. Well, the internal process of stress create this, just this kind of inflammation through uh, different systems, blood, heart, uh, uh, arterial systems. And what happens when something's inflamed over a short period of time? Well, nothing. The body resists. What happens if something's inflamed for a, a long time? And excuse me if there's a physician here or an immunologist that can explain it better, but let's take the example of a cut. You've had cuts when, you, when it doesn't get better. What starts happening? It starts eating away the flesh around it. Well, this is what's happening in these inflammatory processes, which over years result in the deterioration of heart, lung, uh, circulatory system, the things that make us work. Slow processes. Uh, even uh, in our group... Um, and when I say our group, it's, it's a large group, and, and, and you can see how far this knowledge is from mine. Um, we've been looking at stress in the gut. Stress in the gut produces what's called 
gastroenterologists call leaky gut, which means bacteria crosses the gut membrane. Well, you can see how that could cause indigestion. Well, it turns out, and here this is far beyond my knowledge, it turns out that the intestines and the brain are very similar tissue. And uh, the, the neurotransmitters, actually, the things in, in the gut that are released in bacteria that look like neurotransmitters, migrate up to the brain. It is possible, not a strong link, but they're getting money now in our group, and again, this is our group, and a few, you know, third cousins of mine in the group, are looking at the effect of stress, leaky gut, irritable bowel syndrome, Parkinson's disease 30 years later. Because there's this migration of neurotransmitters that affects the brain and perhaps is one of the reasons that people develop Parkinson's disease 30 years later. Stress, leaky gut, Parkinson's disease. So we see that we're also talking about processes that have this very long tail. So we know that also psychosocial stress has been found to be significantly correlated with increased CRP, interleukin-6, uh, uh, interleukin-alpha, tumor necrosis factor. These are all different biomarkers of, of what? Of the body experiencing an inflammatory process. And again, and I don't think of it much deeper than this, so I'm not trying to say, oh, you, you see it so simply and I so complexly. It's think of it like a cut and, and being inflamed uh, but think of it as slight inflammation occurring over long periods of time. The body eating away at itself. So how medically important is stress, and, when is, and especially when stress has been severe? Let's look at, these are the underlying processes. Let's look at, at some clinical outcomes. So, incident cardiovascular heart disease by uh, Beth Cohn, who's actually in our research group, she showed that among women, that if they had even some minimum symptoms, up to four symptoms of PTSD, which is far from clinical levels of PTSD, four symptoms of PTSD uh, uh, produced three point times more risk of a heart incident, which means a cardiac event, 14 years later. Now, what, an odds ratio of 3.2, is that big? That's as big as smoking. So PTSD is, is going to deteriorate your heart 14 years later as much as smoking will. Uh, uh, not a small thing. Or you could flip it another way. The aspirin studies, the famous aspirin studies, how many of you take a, a micro aspirin uh, to, uh, for your heart? You don't take micro aspirin? Yeah, good. Uh, many people do. The aspirin studies uh, were, were, were stopped because it was so clear that they would help prevent heart disease, about a fifth of the variance that that's uh, contributing in, in fast math. So this is, this is a, you know, a, a sizable effect. PTSD diagnosis is significantly associated with the majority of the 15 major medical conditions studied in the National Comorbidity Survey. Uh, multiple trauma exposure greatly increases the likelihood of chronic illness, such as diabetes. Following violent injury, now here's a different kind of study, which is very interesting because this is tissue recovery, healing. PTSD symptoms significantly impair physical functioning and impedes recovery over a year. So what this means is, is that after a physical trauma, the actual repair of tissue is slowed if the person has developed PTSD amidst the trauma. Uh, PTSD, this is not the humor part, obviously, this is it. <laughs> PTSD is associated with sexual abuse, was found to be particularly highly related to pain-related physical health problems. So here, what this means is uh, those women who have experienced rape and domestic violence, it was a particular set of health problems that were exacerbated, those that are pain-related. Many health problems, you don't feel anything. Well, if they're pain-related, this even more implicates the HPA axis as the place where stress is, is occurring. Um, pregnancy is a, a powerful process, obviously critically important, uh, but actually is one always interesting to study 
because um, about 50% of births have some medical complication, 50%. So there's a lot of variability within pregnancy. Um, makes it a nice thing to study. So they enrolled uh, 187 women who were pregnant and living or working in close proximity to the World Trade Center on September 11th. They looked at post-traumatic symptomatology, and they found it associated with larger decrements in infant head circumference. Crazy. The size of the infant head, which is a predictor of infant health, which is a, a predictor of body mass of the infant, which, is a pre, which uh, uh, helps explain the ability to, to, to thrive and strive, especially if there's an infection, which also explains cognitive future, is affected by the PTSD or trauma experienced by the mother. Uh, mothers with PTSD had higher morning and evening cortisol levels six months later and had more temperamental infants. This is, again, cortisol producing an inflammatory process, uh, which is uh, affecting the infant development. Mothers living in the World Trade Center area in New York City had almost a two-and-a-half-fold increase in, in uh, IUGR, uh, which is, means having a birth weight in the lowest 10th percentile. You don't want to have a child a baby born in the lowest 10th percentile, related to all kinds of serious developmental problems. And what we see here is even over, uh, what's probably especially important here is the process of stress is affecting the mother, but the infant, remember, is, 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 is rapidly developing. So this also may give us a glimpse at more like a 20 and 30 year process in adults because it, it, it is so rapid. Uh, uh, in, in, in fetal development. Okay, moving to Israel, we looked at sleep problems among Israeli Jews exposed to terrorists and rocket attack. Uh, impaired sleep is very important. It's been found to be related to immune downregulation, inflammation, heart disease, diabetes, and increased psychological distress. Impaired sleep is also related to trauma exposure in clinical populations. We know that, but there's been very little done about the disturbance following chronic exposure to trauma threat, and we're looking at, at uh, 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 especially rocket attacks and potential terrorist attacks in Israel during this period. We studied 1,001 Israelis who were identified by random dialing, representing a national sample, about 50% of dialed numbers answer, that's because a lot of them are not working, some are businesses, etc. And we conducted these interviews in Hebrew or Russian, depending on the language of the person answering the phone. This also is important to point out that this is already a time of decreased terrorist threat and rocket attack following an earlier prolonged period. And that's why we picked it. We wanted to see what's kind of happening after things have, if you can call it in Israel, settled down, settled down. We predicted that sleep disturbance would be high and related to trauma exposure, psychosocial resource loss, and stressful life events. So the question is, psychological stress may diminish, does sleep disturbance remain? Well, about 5.5% had PTSD. That's a big drop because our earlier studies showed about 18%. So a huge drop in PTSD in the Israeli public at, by this time. Depression down to 3.8%, again, clinical depression was up to about 18, 19 percent. Bombs stopped coming, the, the, the missiles stopped coming, people uh, uh, returned to their more or less normal psychology. Those with greater PTSD symptoms, uh, we did find over time, uh, uh, turned to more right-wing political viewpoints and kept them. So there's not a shift to back after there's a shift to the right. So. We have a greatly decreased distress compared to earlier periods. Clinical sleep disturbance, and again, we used clinical diagnosis of sleep, which, by the way, in most populations around the world is at about 10%, was 37.4%. Over a third of Israelis have clinical levels of sleep disturbance. We're going to talk about in a minute why, how important that is. Among those with probable PTSD, sleep disturbance was uh, about 82%. And among those with probable depression, sleep disturbance was 80%. So huge amount of sleep disturbance. And we're going to look at, because sleep is one of the critical factors in the stress biology 
breakdown train. Some of the things that predicted sleep disturbance, women had about one and a half times more likelihood of sleep disturbance than men. Those aged 50 to 64, about double the, the odds of sleep disturbance. Well, if you get older, you get more sleep disturbance. Over 65, uh, you're uh, about four and a half times. So these are really control factors for us. Less than high school education, about double sleep disturbance. Uh, how religious you were, your marital status and income weren't significant. Greater economic loss, that is, if you experience economic loss, which a lot of that economic loss was due to the, uh, uh, if, if, if you don't remember, there was a, the economic depression hit Israel, was following the terrorist attack, no, no, no tourists coming, no investment in business, so there was a lot of economic downturn, and that certainly causes people sleep problems. Also, psychosocial resource loss in personal uh, resiliency factors, also social factors. As a result of terrorism, so we asked people how much have you lost self-esteem, confidence, friends, uh, connections with friends. And uh, this produced about two and a half times more likelihood of sleep problems, controlling for everything else. So we're controlling now for all those uh, demographics. It's also interesting that non-traumatic stressful life events, including death of family members and, and uh, other things, not related, though, because we asked related to the terrorism or rocket attacks or not, uh, that these, although has a significant effect, much smaller than the effects of, of the threat of war and rocket attacks, etc. So terror and war exposure is more powerful than hassles or even than other major stressors. We also then looked at biological markers of stress in a further study, which we're just kind of finishing up now. Um, markers of inflammation, we looked at, at a, a couple, CMV and EBV. Well, what happens is you probably all, all have heard of, of a herpes virus, right? Well, about 90, 92% of Israelis have her, carry a herpes virus. And what happens is normally your, your uh, antibodies in your system, uh, you know, these cold sores, uh, uh, usually you get in your mouth, although it might be type 2 herpes as well. Uh, the, what happens is the more you show antibodies, the more downgraded your immune system is. The reason for that is if your immune system was powerfully working, the disease process wouldn't be rising and you wouldn't need the antibodies to be attacking them. So you kind of have to... Uh, understand that sort of fight. If you don't want to understand the fight, just understand that it's a marker of immune downregulation. In other words, your immune system is impaired for EBV and CMV. <clears throat> These are sentinel biomarkers of immune system compromise, and higher le levels indicate more inflammation and worse immune functioning. We also looked at CRP, or C-reactive protein. It's a protein which increases in the bloodstream in response to inflammation. It's a sign that you are experiencing the inflammation process. It's also related to the immune system because what happens is if your immune system is downgraded and there's always pathogens in the environment, okay? There's always bacteria, viruses, uh, injuries, uh, genetics that are working from underneath up. If your immune system is downgraded, the viruses, the bacteria, the injuries, the negative genetics attack the body, downgraded immune system, more inflammation. So also the immune system and inflammation are kind of uh, 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 in, in some ways part of the same uh, process. So some ways are also different. And we know, again, that the inflammation is related to a higher level of diabetes, hypertension, and later cardiovascular disease. So in this study, it's a Jewish-Israeli sample. We uh, looked at individuals from our previous surveys that either had lots of exposure or no exposure to terrorism, war, uh, uh, rocket attacks on, on a personal level. Obviously, it's impossible to find an Israeli that doesn't have a son that's somewhere in Jerusalem when something happened. But so it's uh, 
we interviewed 171 individuals. You can see about half male. It was a little older sample than, than I, we wanted. About 20% had PTSD, 9% uh, met cr criteria for uh, uh, major depression. And we also took their blood. We, uh, and we have a wonderful way of taking blood. Um, uh, uh, we hire vampires. No, just kidding. We uh, uh, actually, you know this test for diabetes where you just do a little pinprick? So we just do a little pinprick, and then we take five spots. That's all I need, five spots of blood, and we mail those little spots on cards to our laboratory in Chicago. <clears throat> so, and we also controlled for and had to remove individuals that had active infections, hyperlipidemia, hypertension, um, and people that were actively taking aspirins. They, they were removed from uh, the study. <clears throat> So the first of all, the biological markers of stress, uh, CRP and PTSD among Israelis, the PTSD quite strongly predicted CRP, a correlation about 0 0.3, 0 0.35 between uh, uh, PTSD and CRP, controlling for body mass, age, uh, and other factors. Now, that from psychology may not sound as strong to you, but in biological research, to get relationships like 0 0.10, 0 0.15, of processes is, is, is pretty remarkable. And we're not talking about psychological, psychological. We're talking about PTSD and, uh, in this case, how much uh, 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 this biomarker of inflammation shows going on in your body. <clears throat> this means that as PTSD symptoms increase, your body turns against itself and as the process of biological uh, inflammation begins and, remember, it's perpetuated because already we're at a period when, when the amount of stress is at least lower, not an active time of, of, uh, of war. These are early processes that will lead to later increased heart disease, diabetes, greater cancer, and slower wound healing. So if we projected forward in these people, uh, 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 that's what you'd see. Uh, I was talking to Zahala Solomon, who of course does wonderful work, and she was sharing uh, some studies that she had of uh, Israeli soldiers that were in, uh, um, prisoners of war, they're having diseases, uh, heart disease and diabetes, et cetera, et cetera, about 10 years ahead of their, what should be their biological development. Now, you might be a, 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 give the smart answer, we'll say, well, of course, they were so deprived when, uh, when in uh, 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 these camps. But the fact is they were all medically checked when they came back and the cardiologists and uh, uh, etc. found no disease processes working cardiologically. What they didn't check was inflammatory processes that had begun and the PTSD that these men had that's been eating away at them as the cardiologist has been ignoring them. Why is he ignoring them? Because they've been ignoring them. Because now with this new facts and this, if what we find is true, these men should have been treated all along as if they were high cardiac risk, as if they were high risk for diabetes, they should have been on special diets, they should have been given certain drugs that, that block heart disease, etc., and none of this was done. And obviously not because we don't care about them. It was because we were ignorant about these processes that are, uh, were in motion as the body eats itself. Um, we also found for CMV that increased depression was ready to increase CMV, which indicates a compromised immune system. Again, we controlled for body mass, which is highly related to um, CMV age and, and, and income. Again, this will result on this side in greater vulnerability, especially to infection, colds, flu, pneumonia, as well as early onset of, of diabetes. This is the first study to illustrate these effects as a result of terrorism and war. So it's, uh, we've got some problems in the study, especially not large sample size. On the other hand, when you get significant effects and not such a large sample size, it's an indication of rather powerful effects. So <clears throat> that's the first half of the lecture. And what we've seen here is that Stress uh, produces certain psychopathologies, especially we've been interested in depression and PTSD. We've been less cognizant of these biological processes, and we can see that they're also important. So now I'm going to give you the secrets 
to solving stress in your life. Here's all the easy solutions right here. <clears throat> there are no easy solutions. Anyone that wants to sell you something for stress resistance that's going to be easy, it's going to be nonsense. <clears throat> so, uh, so let's go a little bit to, to theory, core theory. We have diverse events. How is it possible that conflict, health problems, and war, what do they have in common? Well, conservation of resources theory says that we all are striving to create and protect the things that we value, which I call resources. Therefore, we're directed to cultivate resources even when stress is not occurring. And then when threat occurs, there is an activation of resources thrown at the problem. Well, if now what we're thinking is this is going to include biological resources, which is going to cause a depletion of the resources that would otherwise be necessary to help our biology go on, and we have limited uh, amounts of these resources. So very quickly, core theory says that stress occurs in three circumstances. I don't have time to go into great detail. When resources are threatened with loss, when they're actually lost, or there's a failure to adequately gain resources following significant investment. And then stress occurs when? when these central resources that are built to protect what I call the individual nested in family, nested in tribe. Because we're, biologically, we are those three things. We are individuals. We are tied to families. Just very quickly, uh, uh, um, and uh, unfortunately, I left this colleague before we could get going on this research, but we were talking about, I want to talk about early humans and, and, and connectivity. Genetically, we're related to the birds that, that flock together and not the birds that are more individual. We have a very early genetic disposition to be interconnected uh, in a thing called, called, um, called families. And already from the time of, of cavemen, etc., uh, there are clear family groupings, very early biology. And, of course, the tribe is also uh, um, very strong within us. So uh, what then are the secrets of stress resistance? Uh, well, <clears throat> one is that your mind naturally and pow powerfully focuses on past and future loss and ignores gain. We are focused on the threats and losses we experience. That's what gets our attention. And our brain can hardly process and hardly pay attention to gains. Your mind naturally motivates you also to conserve resources. What that means is it also prevents you at the same time uh, from changing these conditions. Because to change, if you didn't notice, to get married, to have, fall in love, to do better at work, to start exercising, demands what? Investment of resources. But you are genetically tuned not to do that. So there's a natural resistance to any process that you're not already along that track. You therefore must first target areas of resource loss and avoid generalized sense of loss. So that's the first big strategy thing. If you have something that's stressful in your life, target it, and whatever resources you have, they have to be thrown at that thing. A marital problem, problem with the child, a weight problem, and our tendency is going to be to underinvest. What's going to happen if you underinvest on something that's hard? You're going to fail. So, and what's our tendency? Not to invest. So you see the built-in uh, uh, dilemma. You must target a plan of resource investment, and I'm telling you, you're going to resist doing so. You've got marital problems. Most people with marital problems go to divorce before they go to marital and never go to marital counseling. Even though actually the empirical work on, on, on marital counseling is very positive, but we resist it. And uh, how many, uh, of course, the women will say, my husband, I've told him that to change for years. He doesn't listen to me. So uh, again, you have to direct resources at the targeted change. You have to be strategic. And again, you have a built-in tendency not to do so. Because we attempt to conserve resources after childhood, you'll try to stay on old pathways. Our tendency to be open to change starts closing up 
uh, probably about the age of 16, is pretty closed by 18. Our pathways are our pathways by that point. And it's very, and these pathways are resistant to change. Um, it's very interesting, in, in, as a supervisor for psychotherapy, you know, we ask our, our clinical students, uh, 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 they work with patients and change this, change that. So my, my wife uh, uh, has them say, pick one little thing and try to change it. And the students go crazy. Oh, no, you can't make me do that too much, too hard. I, I said, just pick a little thing. No, no, too personal, too hard, too difficult. And those that try usually fail because it's hard to change. Resource gain, though, is a long process. It takes time. So we have to overcome this large, powerful uh, a bias in which, as I've mentioned, our, our, our gains focus on, on loss, minimize gain. So we, you've got you've to overcome that built-in bias. Focus away from losses after your plan is in effect is very important. You've got your plan. You've got your strategy. You're going to do it. Now, actually, you have to focus away, especially from the generalized losses that are going to be distracting. Celebrate, concentrate, and exaggerate resource gain. God forbid the death of a child, how long uh, is the recovery? Never? Years, at least? Birth of a child, we celebrate for about... Uh, you know, men give away cigars, you have a cake. Uh, uh, there's studies now in New York showing that uh, businesswomen have, give birth are already doing their business email uh, the next day. We barely celebrate uh, success. In, in fact, we're not even supposed to. You're all these emphasis on modesty, uh, 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 et cetera. And on big things, so a big thing like, like, like the birth of a child, but little things in academia. If, if, if reviewers reject one of my articles, years later in my car, I'm still arguing in my mind with those reviewers. <laughs> uh, articles accepted, I'm on to the next thing. Oh, great, fine. Don't even bother uh, 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 to open a, 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 a bottle of wine. Share your exaggeration of resource gain with loved ones and colleagues. Firgun. You have to celebrate and share this celebration because also no one around you is used to doing that. And by the way, they'll resist it because they want to concentrate on their losses. So you've got a problem there. So this is going to also demand cognitive energy as it's unnatural to our evolutionary state. All this is going to feel uncomfortable. You're going to feel silly, out of place, out of rhythm when you're doing this. Addressing stress as possible requires real lifestyle changes. So you have to truly examine the sources of resource loss. This includes loss of all kinds, personal, social, material resources, the things you most value. Work to change them, and thus this usually requires real change in your life. If you're not making really major upsetting changes that feel very uncomfortable and very unnatural, you're not making the changes that you need to be making. I, I, just, I figured this out only a couple years ago. Hold on, if I'm dieting, I've got to be hungry. Because I always thought, can't I find a diet in which I'm not hungry? And the answer to that is no. No, you can't find a, a diet in, in which uh, you're not hungry. Let's take drugs and they'll speed you up and you can do it that way. Um, some other points related to stress. People that experience more stress are more likely to smoke. Big problem in Israel, especially tobacco, is more addictive than heroin or cocaine. The success rate of getting off of heroin is quite a bit higher than the success rate of stopping smoking. It's a highly addictive drug. It's not easy to quit. Smoking is worse for you than you thought, though. It probably robs you of five years and perhaps as much as ten years of your life, depending on your genetic makeup, due to cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and compromised immune system. Uh, if that's not enough uh, for those who care about your families, it probably is responsible for robbing those around you of five years of their life doesn't matter if you smoke in another room. 
the effects of secondary smoke with the new studies appear to be many times more powerful than we thought. For example, the uh, uh, death rate of cancer in uh, New York City, where they've banned smoking now for, I think it's four years, compared to Kentucky, where they haven't, it's split now by 15%. That's secondary smoking. Okay, that's the bartenders and, and the waiters and, and uh, because also we still have the problem, people are still smoking in, in their houses uh, uh, with their children around. And again, it doesn't matter that you go into another room. It doesn't help, not at all. Uh, daily exercise with no cell phone. Forget 10 minutes of exercise a day. I see uh, when I, I did a search on this, lots of things, just do 10 minutes a day. Well, not enough. Uh, you need about a half hour a day, and you need to push your cardiovascular system, which one good news is you get older, it's easier to push your cardiovascular system um, when you're younger. Uh, vigorous dancing counts, so you can do it in things that have fun. You can go to Israeli uh, folk dancing, and if you, you know, really do it and really, you know, participate, that's good exercise. It releases endorphins, allows respite from the system on effect of daily hassles and stress. This is related to the inflammatory process, by the way. What, what might be occurring here, and there's a lot of mites in this, but what the endorphins and the running in the half hour might be doing, actually, is giving a break in the inflammatory uh, system that's going on, allowing the body some recovery time. And said another way, we may have a rather hard on switch and off switch, so if you turn it off, it may take a while to turn it back on, much longer than, uh, 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 that, than the uh, half hour itself. Also, the endorphins are natural opiates, make you feel better, they decrease pain, they increase euphoria, and they increase positive mood. More push, more gain. So more is better. Uh, 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 by the way, exercise has little effect on weight directly. But exercise increases metabolism, so it has this indirect effect. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, I'm a um, runner and bicycler, and you know, if you run for about an hour, which I never make quite to the hour, it's it's good like uh, uh, for for a third of a piece of cake, of chocolate cake. Oh God, an hour! I just just don't have the third of chocolate cake be done. But what goes on though it, it, is that. Uh, uh, if you do exercise, both uh, uh, weight-bearing and also cardiovascular, it speeds up your metabolism, which m keeps you from this short gain of weight that keeps occurring the, you know, five pounds per ten years kind of uh, uh, climb that occurs. Uh, you know, if that thing tapping on your shoulder when you run is your tush, you need to lose weight. Okay? I heard a comedian uh, say that uh, uh, once. Um, so, weight is obviously very important. It's also stress, sleep loss, and weight gain are interrelated. If you sleep two hours less a night than I do, let's say we started with the same metabolism, and we both keep the same calories, in a, a, about a year you'll have gained 10 pounds, and I won't have if you sleep two hours less. What the body, and this is a very important, act, the body does a couple of things with sleep. One thing is sleep in a very simple level. Sleep is the energy reproducer. We have a thing called ADP, 2-phosphate uh, 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 on the molecule, and at night it becomes 3 again. And you need 3 because during the day it turns, it sheds a phosphate molecule again. That's the energy, the thing we call energy. Okay, sleep is obviously critical for that. But also what sleep does, what's happening when you're not sleeping? In an evolutionary sense, your system has been told you're in trouble. If you're in trouble, conserve resources. If you're conserving resources, lower the speed of your metabolism. You need the food because probably either someone's chasing you or you're a refugee or, or you have some other problem, which is often in an evolutionary sense related to not having food. So the lack of sleep highly related to, to uh, uh, weight gain. Clearly, we eat to comfort ourselves, and we're probably eating because we keep uh, uh, working longer and leading more enjoyable.
parts of our lives. Uh, also, carbs are addictive, and they're probably the main problem. <clears throat> Sleeping less than seven hours a night is highly related to weight gain. Also, very important, you can function on less than seven hours a night of sleep. Your body can't. And basically, every, uh, basically, you can look at it this way. Your body is set up to give you a certain number of waking hours in your life. You don't know how many hours that is. It's genetically primed. You can choose when you take those hours. If you don't sleep, you're using up the hours then. If you sleep seven to eight hours, you're adding time to your life. For everyone, very little individual difference, it appears, and a very strong effect. Uh, those who sleep less, they can be work hard, they can be very productive, uh, uh, they're, they're, they're going to um, die earlier, for example, of heart disease. Uh, some interesting points, also uh, um, some in very interesting studies of, of long-distance di long pilots for the, the planes, okay? So they might sleep at night, but they're not able to, to rest during the flight. They have to be on, on key. They die about 20 years earlier than, than, than their cohorts controlling for other factors. So, again, the body's, you know, it, there's a certain amount of, of, of time you got. Decide when you want to use it up. Turn off all electronics except music for at least uh, these two 20-minute breaks a day. So it's not too much to ask. But you probably won't do it, but uh, this can include reading, but not the newspaper or anything that makes you worry. Certainly not listening to the news in Israel. Uh, yoga is wonderful, I'm sending a lot more people to yoga, especially because a lot of people don't even know how to find a restful state. So I send them to yoga so they can at least learn what it even looks like. Uh, massage is magical. Walks or runs or swims, so you can have this, it can be combined in that way during that time. Uh, and also, I'll even make it easier for you. Just sitting with a cup of coffee or tea or a glass of red wine and staring out into space is restorative. Without a newspaper, the important part is the detaching, the just enjoying the glass of wine or the coffee, and uh, if, if you're mean to think about your ten grandchildren, your one grandchild, not about other things. It also increases creativity. And yes, you can bring a friend, but you're not allowed to talk about troubles, constipation, or your hateful mother-in-law. So you have to keep the conversation on the positive stuff and probably just be sitting with the wine and listening uh, to the music. Uh, instead, we're at this kind of thing that uh, uh, turn off the computer. Uh, you need to build things to look forward to. Theater tickets for the weekend. Much more important than going out over the weekend is to have plans for the weekend. Because it allows us to focus on a positive endpoint that brings us away from the stress of, of, of the day. Not that it's not also good to be spontaneous. It is. Uh, date, have a date with your lover. So you should go out with your lover. Do things. Don't just sit at home. Uh, I read in England the most common thing is to sit home, watch television, bring Indian food home. Bad idea. Bad idea. Go out. Also, uh, after you've dated your lover, go out with your spouse. You know, you can combine. Uh, uh, weekday events and meeting with friends. Very important not to wait till the weekend. You need things to look forward to during the week. And it's, again, this focus on, on, uh, on the gain. Looking forward to the, the workout. Looking forward to the 20 minutes of peace and quiet you'll have. Looking forward to your walk. Important to plan as well as being spontaneous, as the planning gives you something pleasurable to get you through the stressful day. And also, you know, date your spouse if you have a spouse. Uh, the most common thing for people who are married to do is to stop being romantic and to stop dating. You should be wooing your spouse, uh, male or female. You should be doing the same things you were doing to get them originally and and, and continue that. It lifts their self-esteem. It lifts your self-esteem. It makes the love more exciting. The problem is it's an investment of resources. Vacations are critical. Turn off email from work. And by the way, you're really not that important.
dense. Solve conflicts wherever possible. If you haven't really tried, don't tell me it's not possible. Uh, uh, avoidance works to a point. Uh, counseling works and should be taken seriously if you're talking about a conflict with a spouse, a child, or a sibling. The festering of conflicts eats you alive. Again, quite literally, undermining a negative social support has a much more po powerful and negative effect on psych our psychology, those, on our emotions, and our biology, then social support has a positive effect. About four or five times more powerful. So not a little bit more powerful. You must take the first, second, and third step if you have a conflict. And by the way, it doesn't matter if it fails. Uh, um, I don't have good data on this, but uh, I found that people that keep trying on relationships that are in conflict actually feel much better than those that have given up. And I'm talking about key relationships. A, a brother that you had a business argument with, you know, 15 years ago and haven't uh, 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 talked since then. Build and invest in friendships and families, and I would say do not Americanize your friendships. You know, there's this tendency in the United States, you know, the have a nice day kind of thing. Uh, historically, there's this great closeness in, 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 in Israel among friends. Um, I'm not sure where it's going, because as you become more Americanized in business and, and, and work and more separated and more isolated into, uh, I lived on a kibbutz for a while, and I remember when, when they, uh, 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 they didn't allow televisions in people's own um, rooms, and people all came uh, together and were together. And... Um, uh, there was no kitchens in the home, so people came together and eat. And then they said, oh, you can have a television. And suddenly no one's together anymore. Uh, system and individual workaholism. The facts, take them or leave them. Creativity is inversely related to physical and emotional exhaustion. You might be working more, you're not working better. Creativity can increase in brief periods of overwork and high demand, but then declines rapidly when overwork becomes chronic. Workaholism is related to increased work-family conflict, which is in turn related to decreased productivity over time, and your burning resources at a faster rate than you can create them. Gratitude and counting blessing. It sounds silly, but uh, it actually has a, a, a slight positive impact. Program your BlackBerry to remind you of gratitude twice a day. This rings it up, and you have an appointment, you look and you say, you know, thank you for my, my, my spouse, my children, my work, my health. List your blessings regularly. Make lists, and then keep them. Don't throw the list out. And then your briefcase, every time you open it and you're looking for stuff, you pull out these lists of all these things that you're thankful for. Keep the lists around where you'll find them. Share your list with your loved ones. Probably the exception to that is if your list is about my lover and you also have a spouse, you may want to use code for those lists. But uh, work on anger. Anger is a very understudied emotion. Anger is the emotion most related to physical health problems, heart disease, and uh, probably ability to recover from cancer. Uh, if you stay angry, it's you, not them. If you still stay angry, seek treatment. And I, th I would say that anger, if you just look at hostility in Israel, is really one of the m more serious problems I I in Israel. You see lots of anger. One of the first things uh, that you notice when you're in the United States is how fat people are. One of the first things you notice when you're away from Israel and you come back is how, how, how short people's tempers are, how quick they are to be aggressive. Anger is directly and strongly related to heart disease especially, especially. And by the way, religious practice has no effect on stress. Spirituality does. And spirituality, by the way, is not related to religious practice. So it doesn't matter how many times you put on tefillin, how many times a day you pray, or if you go to synagogue. What matters is if you find spirituality, and spirituality for those who are religious and those who are not, is related to uh, healthier outcomes. Or, you know, you know, simple message here, uh, smell two roses and call me in the morning. If you get a message like that, it's not that simple. What I listed were things that are hard to do, which you will resist having change. Uh, 
if you have a bad sex life with your spouse, you know what's going to happen? You're going to continue to have a bad sex life with your, with your spouse. And sex is one of the things we're most biologically motivated to enjoy. You're still not going to work on it. Once a bad thing has happened and you've had a problem, you're going to be stuck. It takes energy and commitment to change the stream. It's possible. I live in a city that's a city of miracles, Chicago. What is the city of miracles in Chicago? Chicago River uh, uh, flowed into the lake. And in the 19th century, they changed the flow of the river so it moved away from the lake and didn't put garbage into the lake. If you can change the flow of the river, that's probably how hard this is. You're going to resist it, but these are still the answers. And there aren't going to be simpler answers. And if you get them, you get the rainbow. So glad to take questions. Uh, you know, it went quickly, and thank you for coming this evening. Shalom, you hold your beef read. Shall I? I'm sorry, please. Ken. אז השאלה, כי הוא ביקש שאני אעזור על השאלה שאמרתי ש... אוקיי, yes. So, so the question was, um, I, on one hand I said that, that um, our, our, the way we invest resources and the way our river flows, if you will, for the metaphor, is set by the age of about 1618. And, uh, uh, and, and yet I'm saying that... that uh, 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 a change is 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 it possible? And, you say, and and that's my very point. No, it's very difficult. Can you change? Yes, but what I'm saying is it's against your natural tendencies. You're going to feel uncomfortable. It's going to feel unnatural. It's 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 going to be resisted. But if people do make these changes. Uh, 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 in, in their lives, people who who all kinds of changes, whether it's weight loss, stopping workaholism, or making a commitment of love uh, when you realize at 45 that okay, after two divorces, maybe it's time to start working on my ability to have intimacy. But people uh, often does take two divorces and being shocked into uh, my God, I'm going to be alone. Uh, so that's the point. Very difficult and against the stream. And, and also, we're in this world of, of expecting it here and now, so we're constantly buying into these you know, quick kind of solution ideas. But they're not impossible. You know, for example, 10 sessions of marital therapy, is, you know, it's, it's 10 hours and some homework, uh, but you're going to resist investing in it. So the question is, it's 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 diff. Yeah. So the, if it's so difficult to, to to stop smoking, maybe we should prevent it. Yeah. There's lots of programs uh, uh, for prevention of smoking, especially in the adolescents. They work. Uh, uh, there's uh, now rule laws about uh, use of uh, uh, commercials, which is a billion industry. There was actually an Israeli uh, campaign that was stopped uh, uh, to uh, make adolescents feel it's ugly. So, you know, this really cute guy comes up to this cute girl and they kiss and he goes, Ugh, God, your, your mouth smells like an ashtray. And it was very effective and then they stopped doing it. 
So, uh, so we know that. But the other part I want to make about stopping smoking, about 70% of those that try to stop smoking succeed. Just not the first time. It often takes several revolutions. And the success rate's going way up because now there's a couple new medications that with those medications, uh, 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 actually many of the people, you get these chronic lifetime smokers and they go, oh God, I really have to quit this time. This is working. Damn it. I was really, uh, uh, but it actually makes it pretty easy for them to quit with the, uh, uh, with the medications. Yeah, well, uh, so the question is, why do we go from stress and health to stopping the stress? Because if there's problems of stress and then uh, psychological, emotional disturbance, and then these biological processes, I can, anywhere I hit in the chain, I stopped it. If I have a, a drug that's going to stop inflammation, it stops it. If I can treat the PTSD and depression, it stops it. And why not at the source if I can if I can cut off the cycle of stress and even put people on gains and maybe this idea of biological respite for even parts of the day or parts of the weekend, then, then it interrupts uh, uh, the cycle. Uh, I'll just give you another a biological example of this. Uh, and I don't know exactly the figures, but so I'm going to kind of make them up. But if you stop smoking, I think uh, you, you, you cut uh, uh, by half your, your likelihood of cancer and heart disease. Uh, within within uh, uh, two years, something like that. If you stop with uh, five years, it's 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 d about double that. And wh what you're doing is, you're you're there was this in inflammatory deteriorating process, and some of it deteriorations occurred, but it also means then that your body has restorative processes which are slow, and you've given them time to work. So if you stop the stress get into the gains column, you're allowing these natural restorative processes to, to, to occur. Okay, the answer actually is, is uh, it's, uh, I'll give you the question, and uh, so what about people who've uh, undergone chronic or massive loss or traumatic loss, and, and uh, the answer, and where do they have resources from? The answer is they don't. So this is where you need uh, therapy, family, to, uh, uh, to, to, to uh, uh, surround you, uh, medication, psychotherapy. Be, uh, we can stop uh, uh, our success rate. We have a, a clinic for trauma. Our success rate for, for reversing PTSD in 10 sessions is 80%. That's also what others find. Uh, most of the people that come to us uh, um, who've been in treatment with psychoanalysis and psychodynamic, they've been in therapy uh, for, for 5, 10, in 40 years, or if they haven't been in treatment sitting on their PTSD. So, and clearly PTSD, depression, anger, uh, we need therapies or perhaps a ganglion block to, to stop that process to allow restorative processes to come in. Some very interesting studies of um, Vietnam veterans who came back among, among American Indians. American Indians that came back and were received as heroes and did these sweat ceremonies to get out the poisons of war didn't develop PTSD. And those Indians that came back to reservations that were not traditional and didn't do the sweat ceremonies have higher levels of PTSD and alcoholism than their white comparison groups. The whole community came and, and, and cleansed and supported and celebrated uh, and made uh, uh, heroes uh, uh, of them and cleansed the poisons uh, together. Yeah. So you, you suggest stopping the cycle of loss and only 
afterwards try to gain new resources. Right. Well, also, uh, our main commerce and resources outside of ourselves are people that love us and the society that's responsible for us. So Musra Bihon, the security service, is responsible for, for soldiers that, 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 that come back and is supposed to be investing in them. That's obviously a resource outside of the individual's own uh, uh, you know, possibilities. Uh, so, so first you have the PTSD, and then you have the health problems. Well, you, you saw you saw it here. Uh, no, no, it's exactly as you said. As you said, the the uh, PTSD and depression begins a biological deteriorating process. The body is strong, so it takes a while for it to deteriorate, and that process might take one year, five years, 20 years, or 40 years, also then depending on your genetics, because it's also only going to attack you in your weak link. If genetically you weren't programmed to develop heart disease, um, but genetically uh, uh, you have um, uh, the snippet r related to breast cancer, well, we don't have stress in breast cancer, I don't want to go there, uh, to gastrointestinal disorder, uh, that's, where you're, that's where you're going to have, it's going to develop, but it's going to take time. Uh, 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 it's a cooking process, the biological processes. That's also why we miss them, because they, they're, they're downstream of the psychological processes. And because we usually were studying young people, the physical resistance was there, and it was only when they were much older that we start seeing uh, these strong disease processes, which is why we're looking at biomarkers preclinical in our younger samples. Uh, you and then you. Yeah. Well, since it's related to depression, depression's enough, and depression will follow. We're doing some of the first studies on PTSD. It seems to be even more strongly related to PTSD. Also, the difference there why PTSD interests me is that PTSD is the gift that keeps on giving. So depression uh, tends to come and go, uh, um, but uh, PTSD, uh, many of my patients uh, have had nightmares every night for, for, you know, for 10, 20, 30 years, however long they've been living with it. So the activated fear response, the fight-flight things going on, are... are just keep occurring all the time. So it's both, and, um, and, and it's both. And also, a lot of uh, 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 PTSD contains a lot of depression. So with PTSD, you're getting the dose from, from two uh, 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 co-occurring processes. Yeah. So the question is, uh, um, if uh, I said that we are, we we have a hard time celebrating successes. We focus on on loss. Uh, is that is that cultural? Well, since it's in all cultures, we know it's not cultural. We know it's biological. The reasons for it, although any theory of evolutionary theory is not experimental, but but what happens is that in, we stopped changing biologically, I don't know, 30, 40,000 years ago, 50,000 years ago. At that time, there was never a moment when you could gain extra resources. At best, you were surviving. Uh, it's very interesting. Fat is one of the most interesting things. There is no shutoff valve for the amount of fat you can take on. Why is that? 
Why for protein? Yes, etc. Because fat can be stored. And there was no way that you could get so fat that you ha uh, weren't going to get through the winter uh, uh, that it was going to make less a chance. Mo many people died over the winter because of the lack of food. And to be at least as fat as you could get was a good thing. So unfortunately, no shutoff valve for fat. Also, in an evolutionary sense, loss, if I'm attacked, if I lose a tooth, I die. If, um, if on the group level, the stone cutter, we have one person and his son who know how to really cut stones to make weapons. If they die, we're in trouble. Uh, the size of a tribe is about 50 people in an evolutionary sense. If you have 50 people, how many women do you have that can have children? So 25 women, how many are likely to be of childbearing age? Ten. Uh, uh, if uh, another tribe attacks us and kills five of our women, we have very little uh, chance of surviving as a tribe. What is that going to tell you about how powerful jealousy is in men? Okay? Um, uh, uh, built in uh, uh, to, to be that way. And uh, then uh, so there's some interesting uh, differences who tends to be uh, responsible for the physical protection of, of the tribe of 50? Men. Who watches football and, and, and goes crazy over football and tribal kinds of things? Uh, men. Who goes to war now? Men. Uh, women had to keep the home fires uh, uh, burning. Uh, uh, women more protective of children. That was their job, including try to... Uh, 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 go between uh, uh, the mother and, and the baby uh, among all kinds of, 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 of animals. Much stronger. So all these kinds of losses, very powerful. Extra gain? No, hardly any chance of it. If there's no chance of it in an evolutionary sense, it's not built into our biology. How do we know this? By the way, we don't know that this is what happened evolutionary. All evolutionary theory is explanatory. But for example, if we show threats, if you hold it, it won't make the noise. Thank you. Um, if, uh, if we show threats on a screen at a subliminal level that you don't even know what pictures you're seeing, big areas of your brain light up and stay lit up. If we show positive things, babies smiling and, 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 and birthday cakes, brain hardly reacts and doesn't stay lit. So the amount of your brain that's dedicated to this and you can just see it. When you really get angry, really mad, someone's really attacked you or a member of your family, how long does it take you to forgive them, to cool down? You, you just breathe. You, you felt it right then. But someone does something positive for, for you or a member of your family, hardly, hardly noticed. Okay? Uh, unless they're like a doctor and they've saved your child. But then they did what? They saved your child from death. So it's really the loss. Even the gain is, is, is defined through the loss. Or I'm making it all up. I don't know. A little louder. I've got the fan going here. And Yeah, we do uh, uh, w one of the two versions of exposure therapy, um, either CPT or, or, or prolonged exposure. It turns out to my great surprise uh, that um, um, the one with the finger thing, what's it called? EMDR, e EMDR actually works. Uh, can't figure out what? It does work. does does work. Uh, um, they were. Uh, uh, they still have not risen to the level of the Institute of Medicine, which is sort of the toughest authority of of, uh, of, of medicine. But both uh, the US, the International Traumatic Stress Society and the European one, uh, the committees, which are very significant committees with very serious people, who are, by the way, against EMDR, have accepted that that it. Uh, it works. We've no, it has nothing to do, by the way, with the tapping or the movement, eye movement, because it works equally well without those things. So it's still non-scientific in, in what they're doing, and they're insisting on continuing that as opposed to researching more the why. But these are treatments that uh, work. Edna Fuller comes a lot to Israel to do the, uh, 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 the 
prolonged exposure therapy. Uh, we, we like prolonged exposure therapy with, um, w with people who are less educated. People that are more educated seem to like the CPT uh, more, and it's also um, less aversive in experience. You, uh, the problem is, is uh, CPT, you have to write the trauma, the rape, and you have to write, and it ends up being like 10 pages, the rape. And m many of the patients I see have never written more than a paragraph. So the idea of writing 10 pages is just not a possibility. But if you get someone that's more educated and they have to go back and, and, and fill in more details as the memories come back, etc. cetera. So, um, but education, ability to write is a, a block there. Lots of people that, uh, uh, first of all, it's the only, other things shouldn't be allowed. If, if you do psychodynamic therapy, and you know that PE works uh, 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 and these other therapies work, and you don't send them to someone, I think you're doing malpractice. I think you should lose your license. The, uh, these are the those are the control groups that are used in now dozens of studies sh and shown not to work. And, and it's one thing if you're using some therapy that's not clear, but to be continuing to use a therapy that clearly doesn't work and to be keeping people from the therapy that works is malpractice. You should be delicensed. And I tend to say what I mean. Yes. And by the way, we do, by the way, dynamic therapy with the, uh, often with the CPT and trauma uh, therapies. Because I'm not saying that the dynamic therapy can't help in other ways. It just doesn't do anything for PTSD other than continue it. But it can work. Uh, as the CPT and the PE, one thing that's interesting about them is you can still be with your therapist while you do that, as long as you have time. I'll get rid of the PTSD 10 sessions. I can do it in five weeks. And then you can continue treatment of working on insight and interpersonal problems and things that have grown if you've had PTSD for 20 years because the PE does nothing for all those bad things that you've developed. Uh, other therapies can work for that. Maybe a last question. And then, yes. Yeah, well, uh, so the question is on uh, the positive psychology, and, and there's overlap with the things I suggested. Well, because I took it from them. I, you know, I, 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 I always steal from smart people who do good things. But what they're, what, first of all, the evidence on the positive psychology is still weak, and they're ignoring that the lost cycles override the positive cycles. And they are ignoring that because the rom they tend to romanticize uh, uh, this. They also are forgetting reality. So what happens to the, all the inner city women uh, 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 that we're, we're treating? Uh, uh, and they're just supposed to be, you know, happy when, um, you know, just to give an example, when the, the, these housing projects in Chicago have, have been knocked down, people on the first three floors had cut off all of the legs of their chairs and couches and tables because they had to be below the firing line of bullets crossing the apartment, so they were sitting near the floor. And then you're supposed to be, you know, count your blessings, etc. So there is a lack in this romanticization of positive psychology that, first of all, you have to be dealing with negative realities. Likewise, for example, the soldiers, first of all, you have to deal with their PTSD before he's going to be available to... But I was assuming that lots of you are have available. It's a more middle-class group, educated group, came in nice clothes, cars that are w probably working except for some of the students, um, and uh, then you have student cars until you get a car that's working. Um, so more like.